We have heard in many of the panels about the driving force that really held together all of the people who were working, who responded to the disaster, and that was this unity of effort, the determination to rescue, recover, to, to help one another. So that was a great strength of the great strength of the response. However, in the zeal to help, to do good, as we heard, the communications often became tangled. Good people trying to do a job, tripping over each other in order to try to help. And those communications were especially difficult at key times, as we heard, between the many different organizations in the government of Japan that were responding and the organizations that the United States brought, operating sometimes through the DART team, sometimes directly, to, again, to assist. So the, the intentions were noble, the initiative was wonderful, but there was a tangling effect in the communications that sometimes impeded progress. And then from almost nowhere, it seemed, came the Hosano effect. <laughs> communications became, became much less confusing at the high levels between the United States and Japan. Information seemed to flow better in both directions. Questions were posed, answers were returned, and the, as a result, the cooperation became much more effective and the job was much better done. We all have learned about effects in our science classes. Some effects are not so helpful. I would say the Coriolis effect, for example. It turns you sideways as you try to get to your destination. Others effect are very positive. The Bernoulli effect is what allows airplanes to ascend in the, in the air, lifts up aircraft, keeps them in the air. And I would say the Hosano effect was also a lifting effect. It lifted the ability of the United States and Japan to work together at a time that it very much needed it. So it's a great honor uh, to introduce the eponymous Goshi Hosano. Thank you. I thank you very much for supporting uh, Sasakawa Foundation and Japan US Council for helping us. From morning, I have been listening. I saw the first video and many panelists discussions I have listened. And my memory all came back five years ago. When I was, as far as I know, it's a part of it. I don't know the whole. Everybody did their best. And thanks to everybody's effort, we have come this far. And I would like to say thank you for everybody's efforts. I myself, five years ago at that time, I was the uh, assistant to the prime minister and then became a minister. I am only part of things I know. And I was from the nuclear power plant incident I am the politician who has seen from the beginning to all the way. And as I was dealing with it, uh, many speeches, loose ambassador, ambassador helped me a lot, was so cooperative. And uh, ambassador, American ambassador was spending so much time for Japan's hardship. And uh, Shirekan and all other American high-ranking officials, they helped us too. Chakastu, Mr. Chakastu, who gave a speech a few minutes ago, he was a great help. His character helped me a lot, and I was supported by many people, and I'd like to say thank you again. I appreciate that very much. 
Of course, Fukushima is still under the hard situation, and there are so many refugees staying away from Fukushima. But uh, from last uh, spring, April of last year, about 20 kilometers from Futaba Mirai Gaku, there was a new high school was built. It's only 20 kilometers away from the nuclear power plant. I was uh, pushing also high school. Oh, 20 kilometers, you are making the high school. You shouldn't make it. No student will come. But uh, in April, more students came to high school. And we expanded the class. Next year, too, I expect more students will come to this new high school. Only 20 kilometers high school. High school is energetically studying and doing all the activities. Very high level education they will get. And another thing I would like to say, Fukushima is going to become the robot industry headquarters. Mokko system. We are going to we are going to make the model of the reactors, and then a robot is going to use. And those are the one is going to uh, help the economy to advance. And uh, internationally, it was paying attention to five years a long time. Five years of very difficult years, but we have come so far, and it's all grateful to all of you who participated and helped us. I'm going to talk about March 11. I was the assistant to the prime minister at the time. I was doing tax and social securities. On a, and there was another person. Nobody was doing energy. In the past, I, I was uh, energy issues I have done. So prime minister Khan asked me to do that. At that time, I was thinking, Hansai earthquake, like we had a big one in a Kansai area, and I was a college student at the time, and I was a volunteer for two years. I did my best as a volunteer, and it's almost 20 years passed since Awaji, and now I became a prime minister, and I became the assistant to prime minister. I was really surprised that I, I, I was involved in this. Do I have another power to do that? Is there any other person who is more fitting to take this position? But there was no time. Uh, why I became a politician? And then I cannot run away from this heavy role. So I decided to do my best. And I was, there were many, many crises I have to go over. The most crisis I, I faced, but Mr. Oriki has mentioned that March 14 was the worst time. Mr. Yoshida called me from TEPCO. He said, Mr. Hosono, we have done our best, but more everything doesn't work. More, it's very serious issues. And within 15 minutes later, he called me. We are going to do our best, he, he said again. But earthquake and tsunami, two natural disasters hit the area. But nuclear power plant incident, that was becoming even worse. The government, Japanese government, backbone might fall. So it was serious. Central government have to do their mess. Government have to come to the front to solve these issues. So it was informal, but there was two conferences was held. Number one, Togo Hombu. It, it, it was in the headquarters of Tokyo, the headquarters. Government headquarters is in a private company. TEPCO is a private company, but we use TEPCO. And I think that the decision was right, even if I think information. The information was all in TEPCO. So information came directly to Tokyo. TEPCO headquarters, so that uh, decision was right. Shiozaki-san has mentioned Prime Minister Kant's, uh, he had a good point and a weak point also. I know all the, but as far as he is the one headquarter, Kan Naoto, Prime Minister, he has an uh, instinct to survival. I think that was a good decision he has done. 
And by having that uh, headquarters, decision-making headquarters, uh, they try to get to the uh, issues and how to make um, decision-making mechanisms, which was becoming much more clear. And, and the response was much more getting smoother. And uh, this headquarters was poor how to cool the nuclear power plant. So remember we talked about the helicopter, but on March 16, first trial they tried before 17th. 16th, it was a trial alone. Self-defense forces are going to use the helicopters, and everything, everything stopped. And at 5 p.m., helicopter came, and see a monitor that I can see the helicopter. The first one was trial. The second one, helicopter came, but the nuclear power was so too high, and it's too dangerous, so they stopped water, and they didn't do it. And the room became completely silent. Everybody lost the word, and they couldn't say a word. In Japan, self-defense forces cannot deal with it. Why private sector people can do? Even self-defense cannot do anything. So that's the kind of thing that became silent. Even myself, I couldn't say a word. But I cannot continue to be just silent. So um, Mr. Kita, Prime Minister Khan and uh, Minister Kitazawa, I t telephoned right away, do, do right away. And then self-defense forces also decided 17 they put uh, water from the airplane. Of course, water actually entered a small amount. But by doing it, self-defense and police department and fire department all started to cooperate from the ground. They started cooling. And also, American armies also provided. Everybody got it together. They are all going to do it. The purpose became much more clear by doing that. And Japanese engineer also doing it. Remember the Kirin, the name of Kirin? Kirin is a long, it's a long neck to machine. And we thought of all kinds of things. Because the pool is up high, Kirin is the best machine. So. Kirin, machine named Kirin, we used long necked machine. And the speed, they tried to bring those Kirin machine on the spot, and they could use it. That is Japan's engineers. It was the engineers was so determined, we are going to do it. And then they put to that Kirin, the long necked ma machine. One more thing, it is informal. There was another conference, Japan-U.S. conference. Mr. Uh, actually, Ms. Susan Basala helped me a lot. And in a very polite way, uh, the, she expressed the situation. But frankly speaking, prior to the establishment of Japan-U.S. meeting, the way the information was shared between Japan and the United States, there were a lot of difficulties. And so uh, establishing the Japan-U.S. meeting, there were diverse opinions about that. But uh, in the end, the prime minister made a decision, although it was informal, uh, should uh, uh, com be composed of all the agencies. And the uh, State Department uh, of the United States and DCM, um, uh, the Ambassador Zumwalt, and uh, Castro uh, was a team leader, and DOE was there. And of course, we did have uh, members from the U.S. Of forces. And so in other words, we had uh, all members gathering. And uh, day after day, uh, I think I spend about two days every day. And uh, then gradually, the frequency has been reduced, but we are able to share the information. And the naming it Hosono Process, I think it was great honor to me. But what I did was, uh, well, I think uh, just the moderator, I tried to uh, create the, the environment conducive to the active exchange of engineers. And uh, the discussion, the contents, subjects are very serious. Every day we were discussing the serious situation. No good news only. For instance, there was a contaminated water, the leakage. So we felt uh, so depressed. But uh, at that time, uh, the Dr. Casto always uh, brought some positive things, uh, tried to cheer us up, raise us up. 
and it was not the atmosphere to crack the jokes, but whenever there is some positive uh, the news, we try to welcome that news with applause. And outside the meeting, uh, we try to I mean, enjoy ourselves by saying uh, jokes. And uh, the, those who do not have a good nature have that facial expression. And in other words, I think the, 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 just the same is true for uh, the other uh, way around. If you have a very rigid expression, you tend to deteriorate your personality. And so when you have a series of bad news, you tend to be very suspicious. You tend to have a reaction that, the, that your subordinates do not work well for you, or others have a suspicious feeling about you. So necessary to have a good atmosphere and enjoy the jokes and enjoy the good food in order to bring uh, the, the atmosphere uh, to a better mood. I think uh, that is exactly uh, the person we need. And that process continued until the December 2011. So in other words, the process continued for about 10 months or nine months. And at the very end, there was a very small, but uh, the, the party to celebrate the ending of the process. And at that time, I never forget. I really cherished the memory. And the fact that this meeting was established, uh, we could have a better exchange of information. So now this is uh, uh, the conference to look back the five years. But I should be very frank that some discussion did not go well. And so I just like to raise your 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 attentions. Particularly, the issue was mostly the unit number four pool. And whether uh, within that pool the water was depleted or not, that was a major discussion. And by using aircraft, try to have some uh, reconnaissance activity. And we could see some sparkling of the water in the pool. So we thought that water still existed. But the American side uh, was very suspicious about the remaining of the water in the pool. And by Clubing this uh, to the side, I believe that we are able to uh, the, dispatch that information to the international community. And uh, so the, uh, the, the water uh, used uh, for discharged, uh, actually Kirin was uh, used to pick up the water from the pool. And water was picked up, and uh, uh, that uh, was proved to be the water without the high radioactive level. And uh, that uh, the process was repeated twice and a few times. And then US side was convinced that water still uh, remained in the pool. Another major point of discussion was, as Prof. Uh, Dambasta rules uh, mentioned, the, how to define the area of evaluation, depending upon the existence of water in the pool, uh, that we should have a different interpretation. In US side, uh, the based on some assumption that there was no water, 50 miles was chosen as evacuation area. And uh, Mr. Roos uh, told me, I still remember his facial expression. Then he said that that was a case. And also he said, United States uh, should always stand with, United, with Japan. Even though the evacuation area differs, Japanese side uh, insisted that 20 kilometers and uh, 50 miles is 80 kilometers. And therefore, four times a wider area uh, was defined by US for evacuation. So there is a big gap between Japan and US. And US, uh, when they consider the safety of their own nationals, they made a judgment to introduce a wider area for evacuation. I could well understand that. From the Japanese people's sentiment, uh, there was some uh, the sense that uh, they developed some distrust about Japanese government's handling. So uh, even though the ambassador faced this, but he continued to say that US would always stand uh, the, besides Japan. And many embassies decided to uh, relocate from Tokyo to other areas. But Ambassador uh, the, the decided to stay in uh, Tokyo and continue to work with us. 
So in that process, of course, uh, there was some uh, the interpretation gap and how to overcome the gap. Uh, for the allies, I think there are the opportunities that we always know the way to overcome the differences. And one of the important themes of information sharing is the worst case scenario sharing. I actually took the initiative and asked the experts to form the group to think about worst case scenario Besides, because I wanted to change the approach. So, of course, up to then, we were always worried about everyday situation. And we tended to uh, the see that results were worse than what we anticipated or expected. So we believe that that was not a right approach. And so then uh, we need to come up with the idea that we should have a worst case scenario. And uh, if the reality uh, becomes the worst, what we should do? And that scenario was created. Then, uh, the, uh, the starting from that, we do not know what we should do. So in order to avoid worst case scenario, we should have a preventive steps. And then I think that itself changed our approach. And uh, so in order not to uh, reach that worst case scenario, what should be done? And for instance, all the information, uh, the, all the uh, the, in the, the material should be supplied and how to contain the slurry material was injected from the top and the U.S. studied uh, this uh, and that knowledge and advice were given from the U.S. side. Unfortunately, we did not reach uh, the worst case scenario, but um, we really uh, was uh, driven to the corner to think about that worst case scenario. This was a historical fact, and I'd like uh, to share that with you. And there are two takeaways, lessons, uh, before I conclude uh, my discussion. And the first uh, lesson is that uh, has been already discussed many times, the difficulty of uh, uh, dispatching the information. And uh, I would like to give my comments. And if I give my own comment from the 11th of March up to the mid-April during that period, uh, I was confined to the room to, uh, to follow the information and to deal with the situation. I didn't have the time to uh, share the information with media. At that time, Chief Cabinet Secretary Edano was responsible for that. But naturally, uh, the disaster area was huge, enormous, and starting from the information about tsunami and the massive information about the status of uh, the nuclear power station, uh, Mr. Edan alone could not handle that. And therefore, about the nuclear power reactor, I decided to hold the a press conference myself. And uh, we have uh, the, all the members of the relevant agencies attending together with me. And on the first day of the press uh, the conference, it took five hours. It continued five hours. The next day, it was not as long as five hours, but I think it was four hour long press conference. So it was repeated every day. And so I did not stop the question from the press. Of course, there are the things I could not answer, but I just say I don't know, and we will check from the next day. And as a journalist, uh, there are many uh, well-known journalists, but also uh, there are the, uh, the unknown uh, journalists as well. But unless they exhaust the questions, I didn't stop the press conference. In terms of provision of the information, I thought it was a minimum necessity. At least I think I was uh, understood as not to hide any information. And the US side or Japanese side are still suspicious about the transparency, but the Japanese government did not hide any information. We, are quite, we were quite transparent. And the only uh, the information I did not uh, the disclose was worst case scenario. And if the people had to leave uh, Tokyo, that was uh, just based on scenario, not reality. And so work itself uh, would become very difficult. So I decided to keep uh, that information, but other information became all open. And uh, at the time of announcement, uh, what Mr. Shiozaki uh, mentioned, accuracy and uh, the speed uh, could not be compatible. It's very difficult. And the, the, and if uh, we just uh, announced the accurate information, it tend to be very slow. 
and so approximate uh, the situation. Overall picture should be presented even though we do not know the detailed figures, uh, we do not know detailed situation, we just like to sh give the rough approximate situation about the details of that macro picture, uh, the details uh, would be given later. And if you actually wait until all the details uh, were available, it became uh, very uh, slow. And therefore, I think that approach uh, becomes a very successful. But the, the word meltdown was not used by the government. For instance, uh, damage of the fuel. Uh, was uh, the, the terminology that we used, or melting of the, the fuel. We did not mention uh, what kind of melting, but meltdown, the word meltdown was not used. But uh, we are sure that it was melted. And uh, the, we were very frank that the word meltdown would not be necessarily wrong, but uh, the we actually uh, the give uh, the accurate information later when the truth came out. And so about the Japan-US alliance, I talked about the informality of the Japan-US the meeting then. And fortunately, uh, thanks to the lessons uh, the obtained from that, uh, we have uh, the uh, ACM alliance uh, coordination mechanism under the new defense cooperation guideline. And so uh, we assume all the different situations, and depending upon the situations, all the relevant agencies were involved. I think that mechanism has been put in place, and I would like to welcome this from the bottom of my heart. And what becomes very clear in the, the accidents, this mechanism should be very flexible. In other words, depending upon the uh, the development, the flexibility uh, should be incorporated into the mechanism. And uh, uh, Ambassador the Roos did and uh, Prime Minister Khan did on the Japanese side. Who is the risk taker? Who is responsible for taking the risk? And uh, with that risk, whether it is possible to make judgment properly. And I think uh, that is a very important part to ensure the alliance mechanism can work or not. I should say that uh, many people uh, uh, intuitively would like to avoid the judgment, and we would like to spend more time to delay the judgment. But sometimes that is not allowed. Somebody must take a risk and make judgment, unless there is a mechanism to ensure that. And uh, even though uh, the, all the agencies were involved on an equal footing, uh, the, unless uh, there is somebody to take uh, risk and make a decision, it doesn't function. <laughs> I have been talking about functions of U.S.-Japan uh, relationship, and through response in the accident, I really felt uh, the warm, warmth and thoughtfulness of American side. Uh, there are a lot of uh, the friends uh, being here, and, and I think that's the uh, the best thing about our alliance is the alliance with heart. And I really uh, would like to pass this on uh, to the next generation. And I think that's the duty of those who are actually involved in the response to the accident. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, uh, osuno san for those uh, reflections and, me and memories. We don't have time for a lot of questions, so let me try to clarify a couple of points. The idea of constructing a worst-case scenario and then planning against it trying to prevent it happening carries extraordinary public relations and, and uh, political risks. If there is a leak about the worst case scenario, it can easily bis be mistaken for a prediction, for a government estimate of what's to happen and can cause 
great misunderstandings. Were there any, were there any leaks of your worst case scenario? Were there any uh, incidents in which you had to explain that this was not a prediction, but it was simply a, a planning scenario? First of all, with regard to uh, the political risk when we prepared this, I was keenly aware of that. Even though it uh, the, um, didn't leak, uh, the, sometimes, someday, people may find out, and I was responsible for preparing it, and then I would be accused, and, and I might have to take political responsibility. I was aware of that, but I really felt that that uh, had to be made, prepared. So I had that determination. So I got lots of uh, criticism. So if the criticism became so large, I was prepared to take that responsibility. But uh, that was not base for my decision to prepare it. Once uh, there is the risk of uh, the leak, uh, I was very concerned about that possibility. Every day, I went to TEPCO headquarters at least twice a day at, from Kante, and then there's Tokaido Shinkansen running on the way to TEPCO, and uh, the, the, the Shinkansen coming to Tokyo is totally empty. However, the, Tokyo, the, the Shinkansen going to Shinagawa is full, so that the people are leaving from Tokyo, that means. So it might uh, you might think it's that it's exaggeration. So this the the Kasumigaseki between the Kante and Tepco there is Kasumigaseki, and then there is a park. It's a really a center of Tokyo, and I felt very keenly I have to defend. Uh, the Tokyo. So I was very concerned and very careful about not, uh, the, you know, getting this one leak. So there are only few people who knew this uh, the scenario, and then only just a few people actually read it. And was after those uh, the people read it, we uh, the, took it back. So we try to be very careful protecting that document. However, we shared it with uh, the U.S. side. I felt like I had to. And, uh, well, the, the Japanese, uh, the government, uh, the, some people were not uh, very happy with that decision, but I do not think it was a bad uh, decision. And clearly something that was, uh, was prudent, uh, although, although difficult. Final. Final question, uh, uh, Hosano uh, San. In your position, did you have the authority to give orders, or was your authority simply to ensure that the information flowed so that the prime minister's okay. orders would be better informed? Uh, I do not have any authority to make decision because I was an assistant, but I'm assistant to the prime minister, so I I was in the position where I could make decision on behalf of uh, the the prime minister, so that the uh, the this prime minister delegated authority to me. However, whenever I had to make decision, I always got approval from prime minister. First 20 days or 25 days, and, um, I try to get uh, the all the information I could possibly collect, and base. And then I gave that information to prime minister, so uh, the <coughs> prime minister made decision. Uh, however, there are a lot of uh, the things that I was able to uh, have authority to make decision because a prime minister delegated that authority to uh, to me. Your delicate position very well, and uh, you certainly earn the gratitude of your countrymen and those of us who who also uh, worked with Japan. If you would all please joining me, join me in thanking them for. <laughs>